that's why I pushed this road all the way to the wharf because you know why? We are now signing up with fisheries. The Department of Fisheries. Because that's policy. We are putting policy structures so that national government aligns with the provincial government. And then we trickle down to the districts. And then we trickle down to the local level government. And then we trickle right down to the wards. Every ward has to have a ward development plan. And for Gaba Gaba, we are, we, we are pushing at one of the policy structures, which is tourism. So we are now reclaiming all that sea that's that wall land has been taken up by sea. We are reclaiming that land and we are now going to build a new wharf there. With the building of the new wharf, we want to bring industry here. We want to start repairing boats over here, luxury boats, small boats. We want to start doing that here. There are fishing trawlers that are going to be coming in. We are distributing nets all around the coastline. We will be putting cool storage up here, all of this, cool chain, all on, on, along all the jetties in Central Province. Now you go to Hula, you go to Hood Lagoon, those jetties are lying idle. Well, we now have an agreement where you know, there will all be cool storages fitted all along. There's going to be a lot of nets, about 2 million feet away of nets and fishing gear distributed all around our communities. Because we now want to start building industry within our communities. Every village has to be driven by an underlying economic activity. Gaba Gaba Asira Tano, we got no land for agriculture. We can do it as substance farmers, but when you want to go into commercial farming, Gaba Gaba Asira Tano. So we got to look at another thing, another alternate, and that's we look at our ocean. Because So we look at open up our seas and we drive this. Other parts of Central Province, we got good farming land. So we are now driving the one crop per district and one crop per farmer concept. To give you another idea is that now I went to Hula uh, late two weeks ago. We pay through prime industry. We are bringing first 300 cattle out of 2,000 cattle. Another one crop per district program with Rigo being uh, driven by livestock. Launa Kalana is already starting to beef. We prepare Launa Kalana and the cattle will be arriving shortly. That's the first of 2,000 cattle that will go on a breeding program for us. We have put in another prime industry program down at uh, Agewairu. Our plantation, we have put 10 million kina in there to start bringing up, bring, building our first primary industry station. 10 million kina is already there. So that our farmers are not coming to Mosby for help. We have created 147 extension programs. So we will have 100 new extension officers put into this program to start driving the, the three pillars of our economy. So things are happening. And you have to listen well and hook up onto this. Always understand that unless it's law or policy, you are wasting your time. So don't come to me with a church program to build a church because there's really no money for the church. To build a church, the congregation got to build a church. I am very, very pleased to come. I really wanted to come here today because government didn't put one toy into this church. This church has been helped and built by good Samaritans and helped by the, by the church itself. My job is to empower you to improve your standard of living. To make sure that our kids go to school. And for information, for this year, our kids' school fees, I paid, not me, I paid, but through my PSIP, 8.4 million kina school fees. I didn't even get my PSIP yet, but I was able to put 8.4 million kina into all our children's school fees. And for information, since I got in, we have spent 26 million kina on school fees. Why talk about it? No, I don't talk about it, because to me, it's not important. We have put 14 million kina into good water systems in 50 of our villages. 14 million kina. Gaba Gaba, I think they're drilling here as well. Solar driven, you just turn on a tap and water supply. That's phase one. Do I talk about it? No, I don't talk about it because this is not, these are small things. Because they are, your ba these are, they are a basic necessity to our living. Our mothers need clean water. I am talking about tourism and agriculture. And I need to put the basics in there. I got to put my money where my mouth is before I talk about tourism. And we will be doing 50 villages every year. Don't ask me where the money is coming from. My job as a governor is to go and find the money. But we are following our policy directives. So that's where the church comes in. So long as you hook up with the provincial government's plans, the churches, you will not go wrong. And to top it off, where you, the churches, will get money again, is through our tourism program. Where the church is coming. So we have what you call a heritage program. So any church that falls over the age of 70 years, you fall into this category of heritage. And we have started a program already. 
we have already rolled out some money. The first one million, I think, has been going out. We paid out the first three hundred and fifty thousand out of the one million. The first chance to get the money is our cathedral at Yule Island. So Yule Island got his first check of a hundred thousand. And then I think there's one in Mekeo that will be getting the next 100,000 and we got a few in Goyla that is going. And these are just the first bets. But the idea is that when I was a kid growing up in Gaba Gaba, every time somebody died, I used to follow my aunties and uncles and my friends to the cemetery. I was only a little boy. And after we buried, we used to walk around the graveyard and look at headstones. And I noticed that there were a lot of very strange names on, on the headstones. So I used to ask my auntie, Oh, those are all uh, someone miss missionary. Oh, those are all missionary from this place. And then, uh, you know, at the time, there were trees overgrowing the, the graveyard. If you go today, too, those trees are still over, those gra graves are still overgrown by bush and trees. None of you are cleaning those graveyards. And this heritage program is all about that. So when we give the 100,000, we are requesting that that 100,000 will go towards restoring the church as a heritage building. On top of that, we want that same money to be used to restore all the graveyards of missionaries that are buried and forgotten about. We want all those graveyards to be restored, and we also want a, a monument to be built in front of the church and list down all the missionaries that came through the church. And lastly, we want the history of the church. And all of that is captured and becomes one of our tourism products. One of our many tourism products in the, in the province. Because people just don't come to swim on your, in your seas and eat, drink your cool out. They follow our story. And believe me, our church has the most colorful story. <laughs> all you got to do is just look at the first one I started, you Lailen, and you just try to trace it. It's got a very, very colorful story. You would be amazed at how they built these churches. How they trekked it from Yule Island, where it was 100% Catholic, and then you go down to Delena Village, Delena is 100% United Church. Five minutes only. And then you go further in, and then it's Catholic again, all the way to Goylala. You see? And then you look at the cathedrals and the churches. You will be amazed at the design and the de design and the building itself. How did they move these big bells there? How did they move the colored glasses there? Who built it? The design. How did they move all that equipment up to Goylala? There's a very, very colorful and interesting history behind it. And I want that history. I want that story. The world needs to know about this story and this history. And that's what we're doing. And I'm not going to do this on my own. Like I said, unless it's law or policy, you are wasting your time. And that's why we have this policy structure in place. And now we have TPA and National Cultural, uh, National Cultural Department hooking up with us. What we're doing now is we will register one day in a year to celebrate the messenger with all this history we're talking about. <laughs> to this date, we only celebrate the creator. We have forgotten about the messenger. Without the messenger, none of you would have known anything about the Creator. Oh, when I all his pastors and fathers and sisters, and we've forgotten about them. We just see them as mere tools, but they are very, very important players. And I know in some villages in our province, we celebrate the first arrival of the missionaries. But you are doing it in isolation. Let's make it policy. Let's make it law. Let's make it part of a day that we celebrate uniformly around the province. We select one day. And the Catholics are always ahead of all of us. So the Catholics do it on the 4th of July. So why don't we select one day and make it a day of celebration, make it official. So that is in the program. So the program is coming, we put the first one million behind it. 